Douglas, what are you doing? Come on, Douglas, what are you doing? So this is part three of designing the main central lower road, and I hope you enjoy this. This will be the rest of the upper level. The upper level starts at the helix. The helix originally was a single track helix, but actually when I started building a railroad and I got to the, where the helix area was, I had enough room to make it a double track helix. And in that case, the inner track came from staging up to East Augusta and the outer track came from Brunswick up to Richmond. Heading east from Brunswick, there are four towns that are uh, modeled on the uh, lower road, Cathayance, Bodenheim, Richmond, and Lawrence Mills. I selected Richmond as the town to model at the top of the helix because of its long passing siding and it did have some good descriptions of activities there in the main central and color books. The detailed drawing of Richmond shows you the passing siding and two spurs. One is a team track and the other goes to two industries. We'll talk about those more in the pictures. In this photograph you see the entrance to the helix from Brunswick and at the very top of it you see the exit of the helix that's going to Richmond. In this photograph of the helix, you see where it comes in from the Brunswick area and takes four turns to get up to the Richmond level. As I talked about earlier, the helix was originally designed to be a single track helix and it actually was going to have two switches. One switch at the top to split between Richmond and East Augusta and a switch in the middle of the helix where Brunswick would come in the helix and uh, this was going to provide a kind of a layout design that was two reversing loops connected by a helix. By going to a double track, I got rid of two switches and I also made the loop one, or the layout, one large loop. Here we see the beginning of the passing siding at Richmond. And as you progress to the other end of the passing siding, you get to where the industries are and a road crossover. And then eventually it goes over a bridge and past a farm. The farm was made from an assembly of buildings and farm items that uh, Matt Thompson donated me from his railroad when he redesigned it to be a switching layout. As we travel farther east, we had the towns of Gardner, which had a beautiful brick station that still exists today, and the Cabusiconti branch, which was famous for its short length, its uh, steep grades, and many industries. And then moving on after that, we had Hollowell. Hollowell was basically a suburb of Augusta, but it also had several industries that were rail served and very modeled. All three of these are modeled on my layout. This is a detailed drawing of the Gardner sidings and trackage. The other thing about Gardner is at the very end of the track, there's a drop leaf because there's the entrance to the basement from the stairwell. And uh, normally that is down when I'm not operating, but when it is operating, it's up and it's actually a duck under, but it's at 54 inches, so it's really not much of a duck under. Here's the beginning of the Gardner trackage. There is a main line, a passing siding, and then a uh, storage or yard track for servicing Gardner in the Cabusi Conti branch. The industries in Gardner consist of Gardner Oil, the main central station in Gardner, the freight house, Swift Meatpacking, Samuel Neiman and Sons, and the team track. The Cabusa Conti branch was also part of Gardner and at one point had eight industries served. It followed the Cabusi stream up its uh, steep valley and it had a 4% grade coming off the main and was about a mile long. I looked at two designs for this. The first design had the switch coming off in the wrong direction, but it did have T.W. Dick Steel, the stream, Cabusa Conti stream, Harvey Distributors, York Paper, and the SD Warren Paper Plant. I chose not to use this first sketch as it didn't follow it uh, like it did in real prototype. The second sketch had the actual switch in the correct location and basically looked similar to how the line looked. It had T.W. Dick Steel, it had the stream in it, Harvey Distributors, York Paper, and it also had the SD Warren paper plant. It would change from this when I actually built it, but this was the original design. Although the stream was a prominent feature that I wanted to model, I ended up not doing it because of the way that the main line had to duck under the uh, Kabusu Conti branch. This did not allow me to have a, uh, enough depth to do the stream, at least do it justice. Kabusi is still in the construction phase, but here is a switch off the main, 
and the line leading up to TW Dix with the main line going underneath. The remaining part of the branch has Harvey Distributors, York Paper, and in this case, Wilbur Lumber and Hardware, which was named after my dad rather than having the SD Warren plant. Looking east from the Caboose Conti switch, we see Route 201 and the main line heading to Hollowell. The next town was Hollowell, which had a feed distributor and a bunch of industries served by these tracks right here, including a freight house, a grocery distributor, a fuel oil dealer. There was also famous for its granite quarry, and that was also shipped out from here. And the Maine State Armory also received equipment and supplies from this location. I struggled with the detailed design of Hollowell, as you can see here on the detail drawing, but eventually, as I actually laid out the uh, track, it came out just fine. Hollowell was built at the blob at the end of the peninsula, and here we see the freight house, which is scratch built to match the main central one, the uh, grocery consignment store, the fuel oil distributor, the place where the quarry cut the shed will be. The Maine State Armor is also represented, although it in fact was not actually in this location, but for a modeling license I chose to use. Looking from the end of the peninsula, you can see in the background where the feed distributor is and the location of where the rock cutting quarry shed will be. Traveling east from Hallowell was Augusta, which had a moderate sized yard, a freight house, several industries, and a station in the days of passenger service. The main central then crossed the Kennebec River to East Augusta, where the Statler Tissue Plant was located. The last area of interest was Kennebec, but unfortunately I did not have enough room in the layout to include that, so I'll, before the track goes into station, it le it's in East Augusta. So in the actual dis Augusta design, it actually goes on each side of the aisle, and it is above Brunswick, so I made the aisle five feet wide in that area because of all the actual activity that happened. On this side of the aisle, we have Munden Hardware, which is a fictitious name after my wife's maiden name. And then the other industry is Consolidated Grocers, which is an actual industry in this area. On the other side of the aisle is the rest of Augusta, which I had to divide into two different drawings because of the length of the wall. And this is the lead into that part of Augusta Yard with the Route 202 River Bridge. Here we get a better view of it and the small yard there. And then just going past this, I'm actually in the process of putting all the downtown structures that are going to go on this street and the other end of the aisle from, or that the end of the aisle from Augusta. Here I'm working on the Kennebec River crossing, which will be a deck and some plate girder bridges that go across to East Augusta. In East Augusta, we had the large Statler Tissue Corporation plant. We also had the Kennebec Journal, which was a newspaper company, the Kennebec Beverage Company, which was a beverage distributor, and finally Suburban Propane. This is the detailed drawing of East Augusta where we had the Statler Tissue Plant, which is a major industry. We also had the Kennebec Journal, the Kennebec Beverage Company, O'Connor Scrapyard, and Suburban Propane. As modeled, we have the Kennebec Journal, Kennebec Spirits, a little slice of O'Connor Scrap Metal, the major portion of Statler Tissue, and on the other side of the tracks from Statler Tissue is Suburban Propane. So we'll call that a wrap in the third part of building Main Central Lower Road. Uh, next view will be the branch to Lewiston Lower Road, which will be the last part of the uh, railroad that I built, and a little bit about the Richmond branch, which I did not model, but I do actually have the branch where a train goes in and out of the staging. Uh, anyway, I've had a couple of uh, new uh, viewers subscribe, and I appreciate that, and uh, hope to see you all soon, and thank you for watching.